Party on, Todd. Party on, Sal. Rock on. Rock on. Well, welcome back, podcasters, to another episode of the Party on John cast. This is the Reverend Sal Stramarco, a uh, minister of word and sacrament in the Presbyterian Church USA, a uh, member of Newton Presbytery, uh, in the validated ministry of chaplaincy in the town of Newton. Indeed. And uh, this is uh, Reverend Todd Laddick. I am uh, a an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church of Greater New Jersey, serving a wonderful congregation in the beautiful historic town of Newton on slightly higher ground than Sal. It's the only higher ground I give them. Because God ordained it that way. <laughs> and we actually have technically two guests with us. Very special guest. She's very close to my heart. Um, it's actually my wife, Allison. Whoa. Introduce yourself, Allison. Hello. Hello. I'm Allison. <laughs> Sal's <Sal's> wife. <laughs> Rock on, Allison. Rock on. And she who's the on. other guest? And then our other guest is a uh, uh, little update from our last podcast. Um, the night we recorded our last podcast with Gene Taylor, um, we mm. had we had what we thought was a false alarm. Uh, little did we know, a couple hours after recording that episode, Allison would go into labor and give birth to Calvin Nicholas Sir Marco. Uh, Yay! So Calvin is joining us for the podcast tonight. He is fast asleep, but if you hear a little, uh, little, eh, eh, that's Calvin. And hence why, uh, in the the for those patrons out there who got to see the bonus video, you saw all the, yeah, not uh, stuff happening in the screen when you were explaining how you were gonna get how Alice, not you, how Allison was gonna get induced on Monday. That just didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin had a different agenda. <laughs> Rock on. Well, welcome, little Calvin. Allison, it's long overdue that you're on the show. I'm I'm trying to talk Bernadette into coming on. I don't think I'm going to win, but uh, we'll get, <laughs> I'm glad we'll you're her. on. We we'll have to get her on here. I know. Um, <laughs> so, uh, awesome. Well, I guess that brings us into our Hebrews segment. Hey, guys. Uh, what's up? How do, you guys, how do you know that God loves beer? How? He wrote about it in the book of Hebrews. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, but Allison just put her hand, face her hand. And... <laughs> so, I, um... I, uh... Okay, so in my case, I guess he's not brewing. He's venting. <laughs> Turning water. Um, so... He turning water into <clears throat> wine. Okay, so Sal, why don't you start us off? What are you What are you drinking there, sir? So I am drinking a uh, from Bolero Snort Brewery out of Carlsbad, New Jersey. Uh, it is their Bull Pop uh, beer. It's a Berliner Weiss beer, with raspberry, cherry, and lime. I'll show it to to Todd on the. It's a very hazy kind Ooh. of grapefruit looking beer. It's very sweet. Um, it's not very high alcohol. It's four and a half percent by volume, uh, but it it tastes um, kind of like a little bit like grapefruit juice. Um, looks like it. Looks like grapefruit juice. It looks tape. like it. Yeah. It's sweet. It's not like over uber sweet like a wine, but it's um, it's kind of tastes like a, a goss beer where uh, it could be um, very similar similar in taste to like a really sweet white wine, like a Ooh. like a dessert wine type taste yeah yeah awesome well it looks delicious That's what I'm how about you how about you uh, allison what are you drinking um well uh fat tire it's kind of like sam adams i like that's why i like it um and like I said, like, it's kind of like reminds me of my, my spare tire I have right now, which, you know, eventually I'll work <laughs> on. But it's, it's good. It's kind of a favorite go-to besides like, um, you know, Sam Adams. So. Yeah. And, and I, and I told Allison earlier that she has a very Uber, very, uh, uh, valid reason for the spare tire <laughs> of which I cannot claim for myself, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, cause I have, a, I have about two spare tires right now. <laughs> 
Oh boy. But that, yeah, fat tire, you cannot go wrong with fat tire. Um, and, uh, Sal, man, yours is looking really refreshing, which I guess that brings me to mine. Um, so today, well, I I had not really decided what I was going to drink and every other podcast we've done, uh, I've basically drank, um, some sort of form of whiskey, uh, or whiskey infused cocktail of some sort. So I decided, you know, like there's more to this man than just a bottle of whiskey. And so, so I figured I would uh, pull out a fine local wine. Uh, it's out of uh, Brook Hollow Winery, um, which is located in Columbia, New Jersey, right off of Route 80, um, right off of Route 80 West. And, um, though you can get to it from Route 80 East as well. And uh, it is uh, just a local winery that makes pretty fine wines. I mean, like they make Cabernet, Cabernet um, uh, Sauvignon, they make uh, uh, Chardonnay, they make um, all sorts of different wines. They're more of a dry wine winery than they are a sweet wine, though they do have some sweet wines. They also have a, a phenomenal cranberry wine, which is awesome at Thanksgiving. It's just really, really good. Plus they have wine slushies and a whole Ooh. slew of things there. So definitely worthy trip to go. Yeah, definitely worthy. Uh, so they uh, happened to uh, have a pickup uh, thing arranged. So I ordered online a bottle of 2016 Cabernet Franc, my favorite of their wines. It is bold. It is brassy. It's got uh, all the full fruit of a, a Cabernet, but also like this peppery like like uh, feel to it, but it's super smooth. Um 13% alcohol by volume. So it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So um, I'm going to open that up right now, if you don't mind. I think it's time to stop talking and time to start drinking. Less talking, more drinking. I'm actually going to go, I actually already have to get a refill because uh, <clears throat> we just had our dinner. Just oh, so, I was just so you're hitting seconds. So you're hitting seconds before we practically even start. Ooh, this did you hear the, that? This, that sounded good. Um, I actually, when you texted me that you were getting wine, I was like, ooh, wine. So actually, when I stopped to get beer, I got a bottle of, um, uh, it's called 19 Criminals, I think. Oh, I've heard of it, yes. Cabernet Sauvignon. It's, uh, the reason I initially got it is because it's one of those living wine bottles where you have an app and you scan it and the label comes to life. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I bought one of That's that too, awesome. and I was like, you know what? I thought, you know what, the last couple episodes, I have I too have had bourbon or whiskey. So I was like, you yeah, know we, what? we got to branch out, right? I need a beer. So <laughs> I got the wine room back up. But uh, yeah, Allison, I just had, uh, had dinner outside on the patio. So um, I started early. So um, Allison, I think, went in to get something. But how's that wine tasting? That wine, my friend, is so good. As I said, it's like full fruit. It is um, just like, you know, that warmth you get from a, the first sip of a glass of wine. Just, oh, It's just beautiful. And I can't think of anything better to do. One of the things I love to do is to go and you can do tastings there. You get a glass. And when you bring the tasting, when you bring the glass back, you get free tastings every time you bring the glass back. So you only ever pay 10 or $11, whatever it is for the first t- tasting. And then you bring your glasses back and you can continually just do free taste tastings. And then you can order glasses of wine. So Sal knows this. I will often feel uh, impel- uh, compelled to uh, take a break from work and go out to Brook Hollow Winery and sit out staring, overlooking the, the vineyards and just sipping on this beautiful Cabernet Franc, and uh, I could get lost there doing it. So I'm getting oh. lost here doing it with you all. <laughs> Do they grow their own grapes and stuff? Yeah. They're all New Jersey grapes, though. They buy from a farmer a little further down south in south southern Jersey, and they use those grapes to make the ones that can't grow up here. Uh, but but they do grow they do grow their own grapes. So most of their wines are made from their own grapes. Kind of like Brotherhood Winery up in uh, Washington, where we got married. But before, let's just, uh, I don't know if you heard that. Open my wine. I heard it. (laughs) My wine. I got wine on the brain. My beer. (laughs) Your beer. Your sparkling wine. (laughs) Your sparkling wheat wine. (laughs) My carbonated wheat wine. 
Oh man, that's so good. That is such a good wine. I have a joke. Mm. Uh, Todd can see this, uh, and it's a beer joke. Uh, I I give good head. <laughs> beer. Yes, beer head. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> so, I guess we're we're done with the Hebrews he uh, Vince uh, segment. So we're gonna go on to the most excellent music segment. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, it's surprising every time you hear it wait till you hear it out after production um, yeah the, the, it doesn't quite live up to the production version of it but it, it, it will be there it's still surprising um, so you go, since you're our guest Allison you want to go first what about all music yep talk about what you're, what you're listening to well to be a little raw, a little bit of like a little bit of postpartum depression. So to help with that, you know, it's nice to take Calvin out and for a drive in the sunshine. And you know, I've been playing a lot of uh, Jason Gray and uh, Lecrae lately. Awesome, um, J- Jason Gray is awesome. Lecrae is awesome too. The way that Jason Gray, even before I met Sal, I actually got him. I got Sal hooked on Jason Gray while we. Before we were dating, um, before I met Sal, I got hooked on Jason Gray, just his words and stuff. And then mm-hmm. um, when Sal and I were first dating, I took him. Montgomery, New York has a has a Presbyterian church that is um, – they do concerts and stuff. So um, Jason Gray was playing, and um, um, there was one other um, Christian band, I forget – they're kind of well known, but um, that was actually—I think that was the first time that we went to the concert that you know Jason Gray was playing, and that's one of the reasons why oh, I went. Was, uh, it was Jason Gray and Big Daddy Weave. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Yep. I've I've been a fan of him for a long time, but I kind of got Sal hooked on. Uh, so you introduced me to him, and that was uh, yeah. I remember posting on it on Facebook that it was uh, he was my chaplain that night. <laughs> mm, mm. His music is very. Uh, He's got a very good grasp of um, grief and, yeah. you know, honest Christian living. Yeah, no, yeah. He's not like that sh- sugar-coated stuff. Yeah, so that's what I've been playing a lot. Um, that's awesome. That's kind of it, it helped me. It's helped me a lot. Awesome. I've been through a lot of the past few years, but especially the past few weeks. So... You know, just dealing gotcha. with the COVID thing, it's just very uh, stressful. But so that's what I've that's what I've been listening to. Besides, you know, say, just serious XM and stuff, you know. But I was going to say, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic quarantine cannot be helping with the postpartum depression. <laughs> like, the, the, like this is like got to be the worst time for any sort of depression to hit because it's already depressing. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I think I can say for Alice, we definitely we didn't plan on getting or having a baby during a global pandemic. No. That's uh, a whole say other if you layer did, you're quite prophetic. Yeah. <laughs> so. it, that's basically oh. what we've been listening to lately. So. Hey, Sal, have you ever, um, or Allison, have you ever stared a bee into its eyes? No. No. I, I just did. <laughs> yep just just check that really off my at? list <laughs> how do i know i'm looking at it in no, its eyes because <laughs> it was about this far from my face <laughs> uh so, so yeah, if you guys have noticed you might hear some, you might hear some lawnmowers in the background and bees in the background we are or horns car horns <laughs> we are or horns our, yeah or horns our respective uh, patios, or Don't yeah, um, go yeah, I'm, I'm literally right out. I'm literally right outside of my office door in my in my parsonage, and uh, there's a, it's a roof, but it's a deck, 
Uh, it's like a deck that's a roof. It's weird. But I get to stand out here and get some like sunshine and feel the nice warm air and not be inside. So this is beautiful. It's a great idea. Glad we're outside. Yeah. 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 Um, so what are you listening to, Sal? So I've been listening to, I was listening to a, another podcast. I think it was on the Roughing the, pa- uh, Roughing the Pasture podcast um, this week. Uh, hi, Tyler. Hi, Jay. Um, mm. the, they were talking about what 90s music kind of stuck with you, what, what music from your childhood stuck, stuck with you. And so I, I had this, this flashback memory of, uh, you might remember, Todd, back in the 90s and early 2000s, if, if you were into a certain type of secular music, you, go, you could go to on the internet, the old interwebs, and there was websites dedicated to, well, if you like Blink-182, listen to this band. Or if you like Metallica, listen to this band. Uh, so right yes. after uh, yeah. high school, I was, I'm into, I'm into bands like Overkill, uh, Thrashville, Megadeth. Uh, and so there was a band called, um, Ultimatum, which, uh, <clears throat> Ultimatum was recommended as if you like Overkill and thrash metal, you'll like Ultimatum. So they're a Christian thrash metal band. Okay. Uh, so they had a, they had an album in 98 called Puppet of Destruction. Um, and there's a song on it called there's a song on it called Mortal Stomp. Uh, uh, how do we groan to be released from the confines of earthly mortality? To live is Christ, to die is gain. We'll be free from this earthly frame. Lord, how we long to meet you in the air. The dead shall rise first, the living death shall spare. Eternally change these clothes, cloths shall be shed mortal stomp. The resurrection of the dead. Um, Instantly changed in to incorruption. Uh, let's see. The earth in birth pains shall give up her deceased. Spirit and body will be re- reunited. Death has lost its sting. The grave, its victory. Eternally changed. These clothes will be shed. Mortal stop. The resurrection of the dead. Death. Separation. Life. Resurrection. Stomp. 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 So, we'll, uh, we'll link to it in the, awesome. in the, yeah. in the notes. But absolutely. So. And listen, whether it's Christian, secular, or otherwise, there is nothing wrong with thrash metal. I feel like there's a delay here. Is there a delay never, between you and never. I? <laughs> it must just be the wine. <laughs> awesome. Um, there is, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we're going to roll with it. Uh, so. Uh, I guess that brings me up to what I've been listening to. As you know, Sal, I've been listening to a whole lot of Ozzy Osbourne. I've been going through every one of his solo albums from Blizzard of Oz onward. I'm up through Down to Earth, uh, which came out in 2001. But uh, today I want to um, I want to look at uh, Ozzy Osbourne's song, uh, Mr. Crowley. Uh, it's one of my favorite it's one of my favorite songs, period. I just love the song, Mr. Crowley. Um, but I, I, it's one of my favorite Ozzy songs. And that's off of Blizzard of Oz. Um, you know, uh, Sal, uh, that I, uh, back when I was a teenager, and uh, for a good eight or so years, uh, you know, into my 20s for sure, I was, um, I was uh, a practitioner of Wicca. And so uh, Wicca, you know, was mm-hmm. a, is, is an earth based religion. That's, uh, you know, it's developed over the last probably a uh, hundred years or so. Uh, but, uh, it really was founded by a guy by the name of Gerald Gardner. Now he traced his roots back to medieval, supposedly medieval witches back, you know, that were uh, burned to the stake or whatnot. Uh, there's no real proof that he can't trace it back to then. Yeah, so he, so, so Gerald Gardner started this belief, uh, this system of belief called Wicca, and he based it off of uh, somebody by the name of Aleister Crowley, who was a, um, a, a you know, magician, uh, kind of a, a pe- pagan of sorts, uh, who, who dabbled in magic and was notorious for doing weird and eccentric things, and people thought he was a Satan worshiper and judged him for it. Um, and he always got bad press and whatnot. And he was exotic and did stupid things, no doubt. But, but he, was, he wasn't really a Satan worshiper. That was just uh, people judging him. 
And so Ozzy wrote this song about Aleister Crowley, um, who I think kind of went insane toward the end of his life. And so that adds to the, uh, the mystery of the man, right? Uh, so people, I guess Ozzy felt like people were judging him because people thought he, he was a Satan worshiper when he really wasn't. He got sued for writing suicidal, um, su- suicidal solutions off of Blizzard of Oz, which was yeah. him talking about his drinking problem and how really dr- dr- you know, being an alcoholic and drinking is a slow form of suicide. And I guess a couple of kids had killed themselves. And so people tried to sue Ozzy for influencing their kids' suicide, which is kind of silly. And it got thrown out of court. But I think Ozzy felt like he was in a place of being judged, having been in Black Sabbath and whatnot. And so he wrote Mr. Crowley as a kind of a way of um, and he was being compared to Aleister Crowley. So he was kind of uh, he was kind of writing that as a way of snubbing, you know, his his nose at people. Uh, He writes this and I love these lyrics. Mr. Crowley, what have they done in your head? Oh, Mr. Crowley, did you talk with the dead? Your lifestyle to me seemed so tragic with the thrill of it all. You fooled all the people with magic. Yeah, you waited on Satan's call. Mr. Charming, did you think you were pure? Mr. Alarming in nocturnal rapport. Uncovering things that were sacred manifest on this earth. Ah, conceived in the eye of a secret and they scattered at the afterbirth. Mr. Crowley, won't you ride my white horse? Mr. Crowley, it's symbolic, of course. Approaching a time that is classic, I hear the maidens call. Approaching a time that is drastic, standing with their backs to the wall. Was it polemically sent? I want to know what you meant. I want to know. I want to know what you meant. Yeah. So I think uh, Ozzy had been kind of looking into this Aleister Crowley figure he, he, since he was being compared to him. And that, you know, again, he, he was a weird guy, no doubt and uh, did some weird things. And so it got Ozzy thinking and he wrote this song partly to muse, okay, if I were to ask, you know, Mr. Crowley these questions, what would I ask? And also as a way of kind of playing with his his critics. So great song. Uh, awesome what's that? Song. Yeah. It's an awesome song. And, and the uh, song. Of course, I just, as you were reading the lyrics, I of course heard it in the voice of Ozzy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the great Randy Rhodes and his solo on that is just phenomenal. Yeah. I love Randy Rhodes. So, uh, and we actually just used crazy, uh, crazy train, Mr. Crowley as the intro for you joined me for a coffee talk. That is right. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And you were, we were deciding which, uh, Ozzy song should be used for. And of course we both were like, uh, yeah, Mr. Crowley. <laughs> yep. So here's to Mr. Crowley. To Mr. Crowley. Cheers. Okay. Well, that long wind. Uh, this much more long winded than the song was, so I apologize about that. Um. So that, I guess that brings us to, uh, well, we're gonna call it the more cowbell segment. One, two, three, four. Could you come back in there, please? Fellas. No, we we just wasted two good tracks. This last one was even better than the first. Well, it's just that I find Gene's cowbell playing distracted. I don't know. If I'm the only one, I'll shut up. No, it's pretty rough. Guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Thank you, Bruce. I've got a fever. And the only prescription... <laughs> No cowbell. <laughs> That's not a very good Mister. Uh, not a very good. Uh, Don't you know who I am? I'm Bruce Dickerson. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, it's not a. It, we're not a good impersonators of Christopher Walken, but you know, <laughs> that's okay. That's what that's what technology's for. Um, so basically, the the gist of this uh, the gist of this particular segment is um, the the effects of fear we're living in a crazy time and there are some really crazy things i've seen people do crazy things i've seen happening and and 
So I just wanted to just briefly discuss the effects of fear on our lives because let's face it, man, fear, uh, fear kills. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure, uh, and maybe Allison can answer this a little better than I can, but I'm sure having a new baby adds a whole never, oh, oh, never level of, uh, of fear, uh, to the level of fear that is going on right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of, a lot of the craziness that we'll get into later in the podcast is based out of fear. I agree. Um, yeah. The amount of misinformation and fake news that is <laughs> that is getting, being spread by by otherwise rather normal people on social media is out of fear. Um, yeah. So I, I'm thinking. Uh, okay. So so here's an example. Uh, supermarkets have always been kind of crazy, no matter when you go to them, because especially if you go on the weekends or after work, you know, like people are like, you know, going or during a storm, God forbid we, you know, we're going to be in the house a whole day. We better make sure we stock up on water and everything else. Um, Of course you could melt the snow and you would have water, but you know, Hey, Uh, so, so, um, but I was in the supermarket uh, maybe like a month ago it was, um, and, you know, you have to have masks on and stuff. And there was this guy who is dressed in pajamas and an overcoat. He had pajamas on. Then he had another layer over the top of his his, sh- his shirt pajama. And then he had an overcoat over top of that. He was in, like, these, like, um, slipper shoes that had, like, layers of socks. And then he had gloves on and a mask on. And he was literally, and I mean literally, like Barry Allen the Flash, sprinting down the the center aisle, the main aisle of the of the um, right by where everybody checks out, the main aisle of the supermarket, at, at a speed I couldn't even clock. And I'm like, there are older people like coming out. I mean, he could have killed somebody doing that. And he was doing it because he wanted to get his stuff and get out as quickly as possible, so he didn't catch it. It being <laughs> COVID nineteen. And I'm thinking to myself, that's insane. It's <laughs> absolutely crazy. And, uh, you know, so like, that's one example of like the effects of fear. I mean, like people are out of their heads. Yeah. I saw, we had, uh, someone at one of our medical vendors, I'm not, might've been our podiatrist came to our facility today and he had, he didn't just have a mask on. He had a, uh, full face, um, respirator. Like if, if you seem like, uh, uh, the guys that do like the fumigation of like, yeah. and they put the, and it's got the, you know, the full kind of, kind of looks like a scuba mask with the, the two big round <laughs> filters. And I was like, that's yeah. a little overboard. <laughs> you're in a health, you're in a nursing home. Like, like right. N95 or, probably, right. probably would have been just have worked it would have been it would have sufficed yeah i mean that that gets to the craziness of i mean that really uh, adds to the the joke that the babylon Bee made recently about people now being ordered to walk in hamster wheels to make sure that they're social distancing (laughs) which (laughs) which is the way i mean we're getting so crazy that like that joke actually really works because (laughs) you know or, or you know you take a picture with your family out in the woods as you're hiking there's nobody around clearly in the picture and people are like, where are your masks? What good's my mask going to do there? <laughs> you know? So, like, like I don't wear my masks around my family in the house. Why would I wear one on the trail by myself with them in the woods? <laughs> or, or, you see, or you see people driving in their cars by themselves with a mask on. With their mask on. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, you know, okay, then, then you have the, the worry about you could, you know, pass out from having your mask on. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not to mention, uh, I also see people driving with their gloves on. So you've gone into the store, you put your gloves on, you touched things that could potentially have COVID-19. Then you go out of the store and you drive home with your gloves on, probably walk into your house with your gloves on. What good is that doing? (laughs) Yeah. uh, People don't realize like the gloves are you're you're better off just wearing not having gloves on. 
Yeah, sure, the gloves protect your hands, but all they do is uh, take the germs from one surface and put them on another surface on another surface. The gloves really, if you've ever worked in a medical field, that the setting the gloves are, are meant to be okay you put them on you do this specific task you take them off you throw them and you out. throw them out and you wash your hands yeah. uh the second you touch something else with your gloves then you take your gloves off and you touch that very object you've now defeated the entire purpose of having your gloves on yeah. it's 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 lunacy and then on the flip side okay so that's people uh who are taking COVID 19 way too seriously but then there are the people who aren't taking it seriously enough like this bee over my head who's not social distancing um so like what craziness have you seen on that side of things without without going into the the cesspool of politics Well, I mean, I've seen there's several clips that have gone viral. There's a clip I shared today that a um, a guy was a guy was in the Costco and he refused he refused to put on a mask because you're infringing my rights. And so the the Costco, the Costco manager said, "All right," and grabbed his cart and pulled the cart away and took his all his merchandise and walked away with it. He's like, "If you're not going to follow the rules of the the store, get out." Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, I posted on, because uh, at our facility, part of New Jersey's plan to reopen is uh, all staff at nursing homes have to be tested mm-hmm. um, for COVID. So I got tested on Friday. I got tested again yesterday. Uh, I'm negative, obviously. But um, <coughs> <that's okay. laughs> well, sorry, so I, uh, I shared on Facebook. I said I got tested on Friday. I'm negative. I got tested again and I'm going to be tested weekly until the state reopens. But yeah, sure. Go ahead and complain because Costco infringes your rights. And as you put a mask on, um, the, uh, Costco's Costco's asking you to take into consideration. Those, those around you is not infringing your rights. It's called, yeah. it's called responsibility. It's called their store policy, and uh, they have the right to have a policy that you have to follow. It's their store. Just like if someone comes into your house, you set the rules. <laughs> That's right. Uh, stores have gotten away with no shirt, no shoes, no shirt, no service. Well, right now it's no But mask. that's not fair. <laughs> I feel claustrophobic in my T-shirt. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah, the selfishness is pretty high, isn't it? It is. And I think that's and that's out of the fear, of course. Um, yeah, selfishness. Um, yeah. What was the episode I did the other day? Don't be an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be an asshole. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, that was or it was yesterday. That was yesterday. Yeah. And it's it's basically and it, it, one per I saw one person define an asshole as someone who who values themselves over others. Yes. And uh, that's what people are doing now because they're so afraid. They're they're valuing themselves over others. Yeah. Any crazy things you've seen, Allison? Um. No, I mean I was just in the grocery store the other day. Sal was in the car with um, Calvin, and it was kind of busy. And I was it was for Mother's Day, and I was just trying to get in and out, and there was this older woman. Everybody had a mask on, but there was this older woman who was like not social distancing she was kind of going instead of waiting for other people to pass she was kind of going through um in between two people including which was one of them was myself and i just kind of gave her a look and she just started getting really i didn't say anything but i just gave her a look like kind of like a shock <laughs> look, like what are you doing and she just kept saying she was really nasty she just kept saying sorry 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 Right. Um, Which, if you have to keep repeating sorry because you're making the same mistake, you're really not sorry. And right. it's not a mistake at that point. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, she says relax. And I, and I just, I just kind of, I went on with my day, but I'm just like, um, you know, just, you know, some people, they, they don't realize they're going down the wrong way in the aisle. They're not doing it on purpose, but you know, it's kind of a brain fart moment. Um, I I had that the first time going to the grocery store myself. Like I really didn't 
I wasn't reading on social media, like the rules, but then I, I finally kind of caught on, but ever since then I've been very conscious of it, but it's, um, you know, it's not your first time going to the grocery store, you know, just be conscious of other people basically. But I just found right. this woman to be very rude. I did give her a look, but you know, I just found her to be, to just be very rude. Like, you know, when you go to the grocery store, you you may start to you may start to you be a little absent minded, you know, going back into sure. the old, which is fine. But then you re- oh, I'm so sorry or something, you know. Instead of right. being, that's one thing versus what she did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Hey, you know what? It happens. You're just you know people don't do it on purpose, but then to just you know so that that, that that was a recent experience. But other than that, pretty much, you know. Like going out to the store now, I have to have either my in-laws or my mother like stay in the car or Sal will have to stay in the car, um, you know, with Calvin and they have their mask and gloves on because they can't touch him yet, you know. So it's just, it's very, very stressful if you just need a very simple thing. So, yeah. but I mean, I've just, I've, during the day I've, I've, we've been you know, going to like a state park or something, but we've been going by, you know, on, by ourselves yeah. or whatever. Right. We're just doing work in the yard, you know, but uh, that was pretty much the crazy thing that I've, that I've okay. pers- personally witnessed besides what's on social media. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, I mean, we could, we could open up a can of worms with uh, the government and different government like different uh, state governments and how they're opening too soon. And that actually is out of fear. I mean, to be fair to the governments, that's out of fear that the economy is never going to recover from this. And so we've got to do something now. I mean, it's a, it's a valid fear. It is a valid fear, but at what cost, you know, and that's, you know, on either end of these extremes at what cost, you know, like for the people who want to stay, there are people who want churches to stay closed till 2021. And I'm sure when we get to 2021 and they'll want them to be closed till 2022, well, what what little church is going to ever survive that? None of them will. I mean, so uh, like at what cost? I mean, you know, flus hit, other diseases hit. We don't shut down everything forever, you know, ad infinitum. Um, but at the same time, we also don't want to open up too soon. <laughs> so there's a, there's a fine line and a delicate balance there. You don't want to open up too soon, but you can't be lit in a state of fear and panic forever either. So I don't know. Crazy. I've seen a couple of my pastor co- friends and colleagues who have said they um, have mentioned 2021. I've seen a few mention not open up until at least there's a vaccine. Yeah, and which could be 2022. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Uh, yeah. But then on the flip side, I've seen people who overact and say, well, vaccines don't are no good. Just look at the flu. It's like, okay, let's all take a, take a step back and take a breath. Um. So, and what they don't realize is, yes, okay, so I was going to say what they don't realize is, yes, okay, on the one end, if you have a vaccine for COVID-19 and you contract COVID-22, it's, it, it, yeah, it's not going to do anything for COVID-19. And that's what happens with the flu. They, they guess what flu is going to be the, the most virulent, and then they put out a vaccine for that, and sometimes they get that guess wrong. And so it doesn't work for the strain of flu you have. That doesn't mean that the flu vaccine doesn't work. It just means you have a different strain of flu than that, what that was covering you for. Okay. So it, it, people just don't understand the mechanics of vaccinations, and, uh, the biology of it. And, they, and those are like viral things, viral things like the flu or COVID. They mutate and they change every year. Yes, they do. So on the flip side, you have vaccines for like polio. Who, who in our generation of people can say they've suffered from polio? I did a funeral last uh, fall for someone who was a polio survivor. Yeah. She was in her early 80s. Anyone under 45. That was Is that the same person we did together? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyone under 50 hasn't had to deal with polio because we have vaccines for it. So, yep. um, medical yeah, science uh, is not medical science is not in opposition of faith. No, uh, and we've had that discussion before. Um, medical science does not negate faith. Faith does not negate medical science, and faith is not God. I mean, 
faith is faith in God is a good thing, but but blind faith is not of God, and faith in science as if science is a God is not a good thing too. I mean, so like, um, yeah, I mean, we have to go with what we believe to be the best information, and and if we find out later on that that information's changed, we use our reason. <laughs> <laughs> and and make you know educated decisions um but this sal i think leads us into the main course of our podcast which is shit house go ahead say it shit house theology Ooh, that stinks <laughs> no <laughs> hair color flushy. Ooh, that smell. <laughs> um, I think Leonard Skinner's coming up. <laughs> anyway, um, I I think uh, that a lot of what we see in the theology going on right now um, on all ends is coming out of fear because people literally don't know what to do next. Um, it's not unprecedented in the sense that, yes, we've been through pandemics before. The churches, the Black Plague was far worse than COVID-19 could ever hope to be. Thanks be to God. Right. <laughs> uh, we, you we know, touched but... On, we touched on that a little bit last last episode with yeah. Gene. You know, World War II in Germany produced some of the best theology of the 20th century in response to... Um, Oh my God! How did how did God permit this to happen, and how do we respond to that? Right, right, um, yeah, and and we have people like Bart who really kind of pushed Calvinism to a much more acceptable palette <laughs> because because he you know would would a sovereign does a sovereign God really allow a Hitler you know or forget allow does a sovereign uh, God plan for Hitler, <laughs> you know, and, um, uh, and, and so Bart came up with, you know, especially in terms of predestination, you know, he came up with, a a double predestination that says, uh, yeah, uh, Jesus became the reprobate and we're all the elect. Yeah. Thanks be to God. <laughs> and that was God's sovereign plan. <laughs> and it doesn't negate predestination. No, no, it doesn't. He did. He did get accused of being a universalist because of that. But yeah, yeah, you know, I yeah. He allowed Bart was. Uh, I mentioned this in a, a coffee talk with the chapel the other day that Bart kind of made Calvinism palatable for Calvinists and non-Calvinists alike. Yes, because he allowed for some of that gray area. He did, and and I think the easy answer, well, it's easy for me because I'm a Methodist, but the easy answer to why Bart works is free will. You know, like it was God's plan, A, to give us free will, and B, to choose Jesus as the reprobate rather than us, and to choose us as elect. And how how do we say that that's not universalism? Because people have a choice. People can choose to not accept God and walk away from God. And, and that was a part of God's sovereign plan as well, which is bringing a little Arminianism in there. (laughs) And uh, I don't think a Calvinist would, would disagree that, yeah, there's enough free will in there uh, that we have the free will to reject God. Yeah. That's, that's not our own, uh, on our own, we would be, we're totally depraved and we wouldn't have a choice, but to be totally depraved. But because God has interceded, because God is sovereign and God has interceded, we have that free will and praise be to God for it. Um, so what is some of the scariest shithouse theology you have heard or seen as of late, Sal, as a result of this COVID-19 stuff? Um, well, I've, I've seen a lot of... Uh... Uh, I don't need to wear a mask because God will protect me. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and actually, I, I, my uh, Allison and I have been uh, zooming with uh, my mom's side of the family every Sunday because um, Calvin had to get voted into the the family, <laughs> um, and so we we were talking <laughs> about scary stuff. Uh, or no, this was a, in a conversation with our last clergy group, not with my family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
some of the same people who uh, are saying that God will, I don't need to wear a mask for COVID-19 because God will protect me <laughs> are the same people um, who need to carry an, a, an uh, AR-15. Uh, because because they, God won't protect them. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it the truth though? <laughs> right. God won't protect me unless I have, you know, God won't protect me. That's why he gave us guns. But I don't need to wear a mask, you know, because God will protect me. <laughs> right. It, it, yeah. Is God sovereign or not? Come on. <laughs> oh, like, boy. Yeah. It, like we want him, We want God to be powerful, but only so powerful. Yeah. Um, so that that is definitely a stinker right there that is that that one didn't even float it just sunk to the bottom of the toilet and we're gonna flush it um <laughs> right, yeah, down, is- right down the, the uh so on the other end of things um so you know in, on the progressive side of things i've heard a lot of people toss around wesley's uh do no harm you know, Wesley had the three simple r- rules, uh, do no harm, do good. And, uh, um, oh, I'm blanking on the third one, but anyway, for our purposes, do no harm. And they are, um, or stay in love with God. I think that's the third one anyway. Um, do no harm. Uh, they're saying, you know, well, we can't go back until we know we're not going to kill a single person by our activities because that would be bringing harm into, you know, that would be doing harm. And yes, it it would be, but not opening the church up and keeping it shut down forever is also doing harm. No, like, (laughs) like, you know, we, we live in, we want to think black and white. We want to think that, Oh, if we just avoid a, B and C, we will do no harm, but that's not life every action has a potential of harming something or someone. So it's not so simple as like, well, if we just avoid opening churches until 2025, we will do no harm. Case in point, um, Sal, your, your institution were one of the earliest ones to shut down and lock down and make sure that people were socially distanced and isolated. But we know without going into specifics, that I at least can think of one person, I'm sure there are more, who died because of that social isolation. Mm -hmm. Because because they they, all they had left in their lives were interacting with other people. And once those aspects of their lives were shut down, uh, the rest of them shut down. Yep. What gave them purpose in their life, I know exactly who you're talking about, what gave them purpose in their life was being present in worship. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, to serve as musician and when yeah. that was no longer an option um the decline was like it was mind-boggling it was so quick i, I couldn't believe it um, yeah. and uh i don't think this is given too much away but um i was not able to be present when they passed away because i was at the hospital as we gave birth to calvin right right so i saw the family like the friday the couple couple days before and then the day they passed, we were in the hospital. It's the circle of life. Yeah. New, new life was beginning and life was ending. Yeah. And it's rare that you actually get to know of a life ending as a new, as you, a new life in your life is beginning, but there's something poetic there actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cause that person was a special person. And so is Calvin obviously. So, um, but, but yeah, I mean, to say that our decisions just flat out aren't going to harm people. I mean, obviously the decision to lock down helped a lot more people than it harmed, but there were people who got harmed as a result of it. That's right. Yeah. You and know? You, it's, uh, so you, and in the, in the church, you see, you see the, I'm going to generalize here, but you see the, the far right, which is open churches. God will protect us. <laughs> and you have the far left which is the progressives who say do no harm love your neighbor protect your neighbor um so yeah i I mean yes if we open up now and half of our congregations get covid19 and die we've done harm but on the flip side if we don't open up for two more years how many how many churches are going to close um how many you know 
95 year old church musicians who their only purpose in life is to play music for three chapel services. All right, my my reason to live is no longer there. Yep. So somewhere in the middle. Yeah, we gotta find we gotta find middle ground. Um, and and when we when we allow our fear to keep us from the middle way, the via media, uh, that's when we cross into shithouse theology. Um, any other shithouse theology you can think of? And there's plenty, I'm sure. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily COVID related, but I I sent you that picture before. Mm-hmm. Tweet. Um, rather well-known progressive Christian uh, whose initials are DBB. Uh, rhymes with Butler Bass. Oops, you down with DBB? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so in this age of co- it is semi quote COVID related. Uh, you see a lot of uh, I'm I'm <clears throat> I'm in a group on Twitter called Weird Reformed Twitter. There's a Weird Episcopal Twitter. There's Weird Weird Catholic Twitter. So Episcopals are currently on Twitter are fighting over the Eucharist. You know, mm-hmm. we talked about this last time. The argument of, you know, do we do online communion? Do we not do online communion? And the Episcopal Church has a pretty high view of, of communion. And so the official stance of the Episcopal Church is, you know, no communion. It's right. not valid if it's online. Um, so this, this high-profile Episcopalian progressive... Uh, and tweeted, apparently the Episcopal Church doesn't approve of virtual Eucharist, but does seem to approve of virtual heresy hunting. (laughs) (laughs) Virtual heresy hunting. Hmm. Yeah. Um, And this same progressive was involved in a whole resurrection gate last year that you and I did. Oh, I remember that well. (laughs) Yes. And said, Pastor said clergy like you and I were uh, shaming other clergy. Uh, Which we weren't. And so, uh, <laughs> we were questioning their theology, trying to dialogue. So someone responded to, to her heresy hunting tweet with, uh, he said, you know, for someone who threatened a whole bunch of seminarians and priests that you were going to contact their bishops when they disagreed with you about resurrection, this is pretty rich. Basically pointing out the blatant hypocrisy of, okay, um, you were doing the same thing last year about threatening to contact bishops over people standing up for the uh, orthodox view of resurrection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right, uh, you know, oh, sure, say something, Allison. It reminds me of Jesus healing the blind man on the Sabbath. And yeah. the Pharisee, it just kind of—it's like, given the circumstances, I think he would understand. That's I, in, ter- not, in terms of online communion. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've co- I've come to that same place. Uh, we discussed it last. Uh, I'm sure you heard, but we discussed it last um, with with Gene last episode. I got to the place where my theology is that it should be in person, um, but uh-huh. at what point does my theology stop the what at what point is my theology a stumbling block to other people receiving the grace of god and at what point do i switch over from being a good faithful follower of christ to a pharisee <laughs> well given the situation it's temporary yeah, it's temporary right right Obviously, you know so you know and you know you're supposed to come as you are to church anyway it's, it's about right. you know it's about your heart so it's like right given this right. situation Yep. I think temporarily it's possible. <laughs> That's, you know. Right. I agree. And I, I think, um, you know, for, for those who, who take a very high view of, of communion and say that, well, it's incarnational, we're supposed to be there in person. Well, then why are you holding online services? That's incarnational too. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, worship itself may not be considered a sacrament, but it is incarnational. So, um, I, I think I, I, my heart is right where yours is, Allison, on that for sure. 
Um, temporarily. It's just temporary. it's temporary. And and the way I did to make myself comfortable is instead of doing it on Facebook Live or doing it on YouTube, I did it on Zoom where people are actually there gathering and participating. You can see each other. You're taking it together. You're partaking in it, receiving it together. That to me is a reasonable compromise until we can be in a place where we can do this in person. Because gasp, if you don't receive it in person, the thing is, what are you doing the rest of the week too? Are you feeding right. yourself with the word or are you like, what, like, what, you know, like, yeah. are, you, are you reflecting or like, what right. are you doing the rest of the week? Is it just that one hour that's, you know. Right. And for the 95 year old who may die this week, who might really be blessed by the sacrament, I'm denying them that for the rest of their lives. <laughs> You know, like there's, there's harm there being done. And if we're to do no harm, if we're to take Wesley's rule of doing no harm seriously, then our theology has to fall under that rule as well. Um, yeah. So, so uh, I, I agree with you. And I think when we get overzealous about our theologies and we become pharisaical in them, uh, that, can, that can end up falling into shithouse theology as well. Right. When we take it to too far we talked about this last week about the whole clericalism and who has the authority to do it yeah um, when, we're, when we're too hard line about it we become pharisees and um yeah there's a there's a middle ground i just this came up in conversation i'm on a i'm on a subcommittee at, at on my community you know we have to start planning for how do we move forward and uh my group is talking about obviously worship and community life and Mm -hmm. uh, one of the people who's a family member of a resident was on the um and she mentioned that you know her church is doing it online she said you know is that a possibility at bristol you know my my facility yeah i said, I said it's a possibility i said i'm open to that um i said i struggle with that theologically my theology says don't do it but um i can do it for residents i will do it in a heartbeat if, if a resident requests it yeah, yeah um i and i told her i said my my biggest stumbling block is not my theology it's my technology i don't have the technology to do it right 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 or you do and the people that would want to receive it from you don't like how many of your population uh have zoom or know how to how to work zoom so it, it's legit i mean it's logistical and you can figure those logistics out but it, but it's not like, a, oh, I can just do it today. <laughs> you know, like, got to work this out. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, absolutely. I think we've, uh, I don't know. Do you have any other sh shithouse theology ideas? I don't. Uh, how about you, Allison? No. 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 I, I think we covered enough of them. Uh, and uh, the toilet probably has already flushed several times. We may, have, we may have clogged the toilet this time. <laughs> we may have clogged the toilet. For, pull out the plunger. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so um, this then uh, leads us to our conclusion. Uh, first off, rock on Allison. Yes. Yes. The the The... The very well mentioned, very well honored Allison, who has been talked about on the show multiple times, sh given shout outs and everything, is here tonight with us. Yay! Um, as is Calvin. So that's that's a wonderful thing. Yep. He's quietly sleeping right now. Quietly oh my God, he has stayed asleep the whole time. Yep. Like that is that is an awesome baby right there. I'm just saying. By the way, the most adorable baby ever. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, all, I, all I hear about um, is um, my girls on Facebook going, oh, oh, Calvin. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> so, yes, uh, he, he wins the Totes Adorbs uh, uh, Award, the Party on John Cass Totes Adorbs Award, uh, which didn't exist until this moment. So... <laughs> uh, so cool. Uh, well, Allison, would you be willing to stick around for another five or 10 minutes uh, to hold a uh, special episode? Yes. Awesome. For those of you who are cheap skating your way back off the airwaves and to your beds or wherever you're going because it's past your bedtime, um, you can uh, think about spending $2, $2, $2, dos, 
two uh, dollars. Uh, uh, and, and that's what, less than a cup of a coffee, a cup of coffee. And, and you could be a member and, and listen, you get to listen to the special episode that follows us, the bonus episode, or you could pay, Oh, I don't know. Five dollars. And that gets you video. You get to watch it, not just listen. And if you go all the way to $10 and you sacrifice a pie of pizza a month, my God, you get the works. You get you get shout outs. You get to talk to us about uh, future programming. You get to, I mean, you get the work. So think about it. We would love to have you uh, as our patrons, but uh, we are glad to have you as listeners, regardless of whether you so want to support us or not. So, <laughs> so thank you for listening. Um, You're getting the content regardless, but if you want the bonus content, give us. Yeah, a- yeah, and. If- and of course, we're 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 being we're laying it on thick, but we love y'all regardless. Yeah, yeah. the money just goes to help support this ministry. We're we're not doing it to uh, we're not making a living on this ministry. We're just that the the, the patrons, patrons, <laughs> just helps offset some of the costs of. Uh, speaking of costs, we we had to renew our our domain name today, and that came out of patron money. That came out of patron money. Yep. Uh, we're gonna have to renew our our Podbean hosting fees that comes out of our patron money. Todd yep. and I split that cost. So yeah, in fact, we're going to probably have to split that cost because we don't have enough patron money to cover that. So hence why, hence why we need you to help support us. <laughs> so um, in the meantime, I guess, uh, hey, Sal, rock on, sir. Rock on. Be excellent. And don't be a jerk. Amen. See you soon.